Thanks, Eunice. Why are complexes coloured? That giant neutron star has been compared to an atomic nucleus. Let's get on with the chemistry. Alrighty, so if you have a central transition metal ion, in this case let's choose the copper 2 plus ion, there, and you surround it by six ligands, we're going to choose water. What's going to happen is the ligands are going to have dative covalent bonds with the central transition metal ion, and they're going to form a complex. In this case, it's an octahedral complex. The six ligands take up space equally around the ion, given 90 degree angles there. Once you've got your complex, if you were to shine white light through it, white light contains all the wavelengths of light, then you may notice something strange. The light comes out the other side, a different colour. In this case, blue. The copper hexahydrate 2 plus complex is blue, appears blue. Why is that? Oh, I broke it. So let's look at the copper atom first of all, 4s1, 3d10. Now we need an iron for this to work properly. Knock off the outer electron from the 4s and one of the electrons from the 3d. So I now have made the copper 2 plus iron. Just fix this up. Okay, the copper 2 plus iron. Now what I need to do is I need to put the ligands in. In this case, water, if you remember. Now, I'm not going to put the water into an octahedral arrangement over here, uh, apart from the fact I had to blow a hole in the wall. And uh, we know something bad's going to happen to Dr. Atkinson at some stage, but not just yet. So these ligands interact with the central transition metal iron, and the d orbital of that central transition metal iron will split in a 3 2 pattern, just like this. Two of the 3D orbitals now have a higher energy than the other three. So what does that mean? Well, this is a partially filled D orbital, and that means it's going to have coloured complexes. Turn on white light, and the colours are going to go along, but they won't interact with the 4S orbital. There's nothing there. It's an empty orbital. But when it hits the partially filled 3D orbital, orange light suddenly is missing from the spectrum. The rest of the light continues through and well I found this alien eyeball here and so that's what you see coming out the other side. You see these colors and your eye interprets all the colors without orange as blue so it appears blue. So what did that orange light actually do? Well it promoted an electron from a lower 3D to a higher 3D orbital. So that's where the energy went. It took it from a lower to a higher energy orbital, further away from the pull of the nucleus. So why is it orange? This is the colour wheel, red, orange, yellow, green, blue and violet. Now if you remember, orange light was absorbed and opposite orange is blue. So the complex looks blue. If yellow light was absorbed, then the complex would look violet. And what if you have a complex that's actually green? It looks green. What colour light was absorbed? Well, red light was absorbed. This so-called colour wheel is in the data booklet. Oh, Dr Atkinson's come to visit. And when he comes to visit, problems ensue. I'm just going to run away. Is this just a metaphor for the fact that my students never remember to put the qualitative observations on their lab reports and fail to get full marks because of it? Perhaps. I don't know.